So this guy on YouTube, Toad Emporium, was making some microfluidic cells using some shrinking film, I believe it's called, and his CNC router. And I was watching this video and I was like, man, seriously? I mean, I really like the thought process of the guy that invented this method, but I don't think this is the easiest way to do this. Well, I grew up designing electronics, so for me obvious choice was to use PCBs. Now the idea is very simple, you just need a needle and you have to scratch the surface of the edge resist layer on the copper. Just by doing this by hand you can create some very very fine traces as you can see here. Now let me get back to this edge resist layer. It's very likely that you will be able to get PCB with this layer applied already. However you may want to etch some other surface, for example glass. For that purpose you can get some spray like this. This is normally used for lithography, but you can do some handwork on it. Also spray like this will be resistant to hydrofluoric acid, so you can etch glass with this. Or alternatively you can use some candle wax. Now this is cheap as method, but it's very very effective. Also very easy to apply, unlike the spray that I mentioned previously. Also, these cells may look like nonsense, because they are nonsense, I absolutely don't need them. This is basically just demonstration of a method to create them. Now etching this stuff is pretty easy, you can just dump this into etchant and it will etch. However, there is so small quantity of the copper that needs to be removed that you can do opposite thing. Also, here's a little trick to see the etching progress, basically. If you place the board on top of some light source, you can see through as the copper will etch out. By the way, if you are using this wax method, absolutely under no circumstances heat the etchant to speed up the process. To test this thing, I simply drilled the inputs to the channel and the outputs and covered it by some packing tape. Then I did some plumbing and yeah, that's it. One major drawback of using packing tape is that it can handle only so much pressure. It's much better to use double-sided tape and glass. Or you can use more than one layer of the packing tape. Oh, by the way, I did not see this coming. Oh, fucking hell. This is, I think, with three layers of packing tape. If I had some smaller tubes, it would be much better to use that, but... Now, even though I know nothing about this subject, I have decided to create some demonstration for you. However, as you can see here, the channel is so shallow that you can see absolutely no color of the liquid that's flowing through. So I have decided to test my luck with fluorescent ink. And I will try to demonstrate the properties of this cell. So here are the two inputs. This thing should be able to mix two colors. This blurred thing is viewing window. Also two viewing windows. And the hole I did not point to is the output. So turn on the lights and let's get right into it. I mean, sorry, but this shot will be quite shaky. Even under UV light, the liquid in the channel is very, very difficult to see, actually. I will apply some filters so you can see what's actually happening there. For example, you can see that my mixer is not mixing very well. And also in those viewing windows, there's always some air bubbles. Also in the channel where there's no mixer, you can see the colors are quite separated well, but the separation is not perfect. I mean, these channels are made by hand, so I am quite surprised that it actually even remotely works. Also, rather than forcing liquids from the input, I rather apply vacuum on the output, but that's introducing a lot of bubbles, so... Yeah.
One thing that did not help very much are the hoses on the input side. They do create a lot of friction and the flow rate is not very good. So I removed them and repeated my experiment with just a few drops of the liquid itself. And I guess that the results are much nicer here. Now here's quite a lot of bubbles and the mixer actually works, so I'm wondering if that has to actually do with the mixing itself, like there's some cavitation or something like that. Yeah, interesting stuff, very fun thing to do actually. So yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time.